All right, so I got my wood cut down for this cutting board. Um, you can see the kind of pattern I'm doing. So I got five inch piece of walnut right here, three quarter inch piece of maple, which is this guy, um, three quarter inch piece of black walnut, which is that guy, inch and a half piece of cherry, uh, and then two half inch pieces of uh, maple, one inch piece of walnut, and two inch piece of cherry. So. Uh, got all the wood cut, and um, so now I will um, start to glue all this together, um, and then after it's glued together, I will make my cuts at an inch and a half through the blank, and then flip everything 90 degrees, and then glue it back together, um, alternating every other piece will be flipped back over. Um, and then it's pretty much done and then flatten it out with a router, sand it, finish it, and done. So here we go. Okay, so here's the, the pattern laid out. Walnut, maple, walnut, cherry, maple, walnut, maple, cherry. <laughs> um, so I'm going to glue this together exact, exactly like I have it here. And then once that's glued up, then I'm going to cut half inch strips all the way through this um, and then flip those 90 degrees and then glue all that together um, and then that'll be my end grain cutting board um, and I keep forgetting to say this so after I cut the one and a half inch strips every other one I'm gonna flip so the walnut will be down here so it'll be reversed um, to give it kind of a a different pattern than just this pattern although this looks pretty cool but um so that's what it's gonna look like time to glue it up so just a little uh, glue up tip whenever you're making one of these cutting boards go ahead and have all your clamps set out and your pieces kind of dry fit in there and then go ahead and glue that way you don't have to screw around with trying to rush and get all your clamps in place and all that stuff so just go ahead and lay it out on there and then glue where you need to glue and then you can just cinch it all down and tighten it together so just makes it a little bit less uh, frantic whenever glue up time comes And another thing about the glue up <coughs> with these ingrain cutting boards is um, don't be scared of using too much glue because you want nice tight joints between all these pieces because any little void in between the wood and the end is going to be a thing that can catch bacteria uh, which is not good for food prep. There we go. Now we'll uh, let that sit overnight. Um, you can wipe this extra glue off if you want to, or you can come back later uh, with a chisel and just take it off. Um, it's not a big deal, really. 
Okay, so we let it dry overnight. Now we are going to unclamp and see how we do. thing is going to be cleaning all this glue up off the back. I'm just going to use an old chisel and um, scrape all that off. And then uh, I'll try to flatten the faces of these out as much as I can. Uh, probably using a hand plane. Um, and then we'll cut it and flip it and glue it back together again. <laughs> okay, so if you have a jointer that would be the ideal way to clean this up and make it flat um, I don't have a jointer so I'm having to do it the old school way with a little Stanley number four hand plane um, it's a crap ton of work as you can tell I'm breathing hard um, so I'm just going across trying to get it uh, fairly smooth and flat um, it doesn't have to be super duper flat. Um, it's pretty close. I got a little low spot here, which means the two ends are high. So it's got like a cup in it. Um, but I'm just kind of running it back and forth, trying to clean it up, make it flat. Because um, that's going to, whenever we cut it and turn it and glue them together, that's going to make sure that the two sides that mate together are flat. So you get a nice tight glue joint. Um, it's nice and straight. So uh, a lot of work, but it's gonna be worth it. Okay, so I'm just gonna trim these uh, these uneven ends off. Just a little thin cut, just to have a nice straight edge. Okay, so um, here you can see the pattern. Um, so like I said, just flip every other one the other direction. And uh, I kind of tried to lay it out 
so that it would have this kind of swooping pattern every other one or a, a diving pattern whichever way you want to look at it but um, and I did offset these on purpose so they don't line up straight through the middle I think it just gives it a better look um, that's not a mistake <laughs> even though it may may look like it but it kind of gives it another little movement through the middle instead of just having everything in lines uh, it'd look kind of boring if everything was straight and in line so um, so that's what it's going to look like now I'm just going to glue all these pieces together um, and let those dry overnight um, and then I'll use my router sled and uh, flatten the top of this off and then flatten the bottom and we'll sand it and finish it and done! So, <laughs> let's go. Okay, so we're just gonna glue this up the same way that we glued up all the individual pieces. Just got my clamps down, wax paper behind. Um, and I'm just gonna put glue in between each one of these joints and then um, check for square. Also, make sure that all these pieces are lined up and not kind of skewed out or that's gonna you know make the vertical lines not be perpendicular to the side and it's just gonna look kind of weird so um, just glue it check for square crank it down and then let the glue dry clamps on there helped it to not be too bowed okay so I got my little router sled all set up here um, I'm just gonna run across and surface this part I've already done this other side to get a flat side and then put it down and then surface this side off and um, then you're ready to sand so here we go Okay, so I've got a couple little um, cracks and little holes and stuff in here, so I just mixed up some uh, five minute epoxy, and I've got this little syringe, and I'm just going to go in here and fill these little uh, cracks and holes with this syringe. Alright, final stage. It's all sanded down. Um, I probably could have sanded a little bit more, but sanding ingrain takes forever. So I got it uh, good to how I want it. And um, the finish I'm using is a uh, Clafems. I think that's how you say it C L A P H A M apostrophe S beeswax salad bowl finish um, it's just an oil and wax uh, mixture um, food safe you want to make sure you use something that's food safe um, if you're doing a cutting board because obviously you're going to be preparing food on it so you just wipe it on there the first coat um, takes a little bit more just to get everything nice and coated well um, and then the next coat, or however many you want to put on, goes on much easier. But the first coat just seems to soak it up. So, 
don't be shy with it. And you're going to rub it in and then just let it dry for a bit. Um, you can read on there whatever finish you're using, how long the manufacturer tells you to let it dry. But um, this stuff sets up fairly quick, maybe 15 minutes or so, and then you're good to buff it off. Okay, now we'll let that dry and then buff it off, and then uh, we're done. So I'll show you all um, the finished product after I get it all waxed up. All right, so here's the finished cutting board. You can see how big it is. Uh, it's 12 inches by about 16 and a half inches long. Um, I'm very pleased with the way this one came out. I think it is a really cool pattern. Um, I like how it's not a straight line through the middle. It kind of zigzags back and forth. Um, if you want to do this pattern, whatever choices of wood you're using, make a 5 inch, 3 quarter inch, 3 quarter inch, inch and a half, half inch, 1 inch, half inch, 2 inch. And that will give you your 12 um, and this same kind of zigzag pattern through the middle. Um, very pleased with it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned something if you want to build one of these. Um, the possibilities are just about endless with these cutting boards. You can make any kind of pattern using any woods. Um, I guess one thing I didn't show is I just put a chamfer around all the edges um, just so you don't have a sharp edge. It just makes it a lot nicer to handle. Um, I didn't put any little recessed hand holes in the end or anything because this one's not too thick and with the chamfers on there it's easy to get your fingers up under there to pick it up so um that's about it i guess uh, if you enjoyed the video leave a like and come back for more i'm gonna keep putting up project videos as i do them they're gonna be very random and just whatever i feel like making uh this channel is not uh narrowed down to one thing uh so if you enjoy this kind of stuff Subscribe and hang around, and I'll see you on the next one.